When it comes to visual communication, there may be a few obvious approaches we think of when looking to establish a visual hierarchy in our design. In previous videos, we learned how contrast in layers, scale, color, and space can help catch the eye initially. But what happens thereafter? Visual hierarchy is more than just what the eye sees first, but also where you want to lead the eye after you have caught the initial attention. Typically, a message has a beginning, middle, and end. So to help communicate a message effectively, you will want to help the viewer navigate through a presentation to clearly comprehend your message as effectively as possible. Now, if you're new to graphic design and layout, there will be lots to learn about some of the delicacies you can incorporate into your design that can help not only present clear information, but a clear visual hierarchy. In graphic design, there are principles of design that can be considered, which we can keep in mind in order to develop and create successful design. These principles all have a relationship between each other and appear in every well-designed piece of work you see. Understanding and harnessing design principles will enable you to create good visual communication and design in a variety of ways to make specific, appropriate, and meaningful impressions. This is what typically separates good design from bad design. In a previous video, I discussed one of the key design principles, hierarchy. In that video, we looked at the key ways hierarchy can be achieved in poster design. In poster design, hierarchy can be achieved in a variety of ways using contrast in layers, contrast in scale, contrast in color, contrast in space, and contrast in direction. Now it's important to mention that these techniques don't have to be used exclusively, as some can be used together to develop a clear hierarchy in your design. In this video, we are going to look at one of the key ways to achieve hierarchy in your poster design. I'm going to take you through a quick presentation where we can look at some examples of how hierarchy can be achieved using contrast in direction in poster design and the lessons we can learn to incorporate into our own design. So let's get into it. So let's take a look at how contrast in direction can help develop visual hierarchy. Now a quick recap, hierarchy is created by contrast between visual elements in a composition. Contrast helps distinguish elements from each other, which helps with legibility. Typically, visual elements with the highest contrast are noticed first, and then depending on the position and alignment of supportive elements will determine whether the eye is led thereafter through a composition. Depending on the choice of positioning and the shape and form of the elements, the designer can control what the eye sees first and seek to create an order, direction, and flow through a composition. Here, you're inviting the viewer to start at point A and move through to points B, C, and so on. Effective use of direction can create more dynamic, unpredictable, and unconventional experiences. Dynamic use of direction can add movement and energy to a composition, which makes them more engaging. Now, direction is particularly prominent in publishing, packaging, leaflet, brochure, and magazine design, where pagination and direction is fundamental. But direction can also be prominent in poster design. Some poster designs arrange elements in such a way that it will clearly lead the eye in a certain direction. Here are some examples that utilize direction well in a variety of ways to establish a clear hierarchy to first draw the eye and then lead the eye through a composition. Some use image and shape very cleverly to suggest a clear direction. Now this is normally the most practical approach and can be done in a literal way or a suggestive way. In these examples, we see the use of arrow shapes used in a literal way to encourage where the eye should move through the composition. In this example, the frightening image of the shark works as the primary hook to first grab your attention and then works to point up to where the composition wants you to look next. Here the image is subconsciously working as a pointer. In these next two examples, image and shapes are used to suggest perspective to draw our eye in a particular direction. First we are drawn to the primary hook and from there we naturally move along with the perspective of the shapes. In each of these examples, it's clear to see where the eye is initially drawn and the direction we are encouraged to move thereafter. To achieve this outcome will require planning and design. Skill and a creative eye will be required to see an opportunity to arrange visual elements in such a way to create direction through a composition. 
This approach can be taken when you want to suggest a clear direction through your composition, while at the same time creating impact, movement, and energy. The difficulty level for this technique is challenging. Now, some posters use type to suggest a clear direction, and this is where it can get a little more tricky. In the previous examples, we saw how shape and form was used in a literal way to suggest direction. Here we see how type is used and arranged to make shapes to again suggest direction. In these examples, we can see how scale has been applied to type to establish the primary hook with the careful arrangement of supportive type elements to suggest where the eye should lead thereafter, whether it's from the top down, bottom up, left to right, or sometimes even multiple. In each example, there is a clear starting point where the composition wants you to begin and a clear direction where your eye is encouraged to flow. To achieve this outcome, we require planning and design. Skill with typography and a creative eye will be required to work with typography carefully to place type in such a way to establish a primary hook and prompt the eye through a composition. Again, this approach can be taken when you want to create high impact, movement and energy in your composition. If done well, this can create far more visually intriguing and appealing results. The difficulty level for this technique is hard. Now, some posters use a combination of image, shape and type together. And this is where it can get really exciting, however, more complex. In the previous examples, we saw how image and type can be used alone to suggest direction. Here we see how both type and image can be used together to create really compelling results. It's not easy to place type and image together on a poster. There will need to be a synergy and balance between the visual elements in order to prevent a composition from looking messy and too busy. In these examples, we can see how scale has been applied to either type or image to establish the primary hook with the careful arrangement of supportive type or image elements to suggest where the eye should lead thereafter. Again, to achieve this outcome, we require planning and design. Skill and a creative eye will be required to work with both image and typography carefully to place them together in such a way to establish a primary hook and prompt the eye through a composition. This approach can be taken when you want to create a dynamic movement, rhythm and energy in your composition. If done well, this can create very attractive and impressionable results. In these examples, we see how elements have been used together well. The difficulty level for this technique is hard. Now lastly, some posters will go as far as to use type and image to suggest multiple directions. This is where standard layout and design conventions are challenged. Here we see how both type and image can be used together to create more unconventional results with more flair and spontaneity. Unlike the previous examples that appear to have a clear starting point and direction, in these examples, even though there is a clear starting point, the eye is encouraged to look around more sporadically thereafter. In these examples, there is more friction between the visual elements because of contrasting arrangements. Now, this could be regarded as busy and complex, but there is a certain quality to them that can be appropriate for a specific context. Now, this may not be a common approach when establishing visual hierarchy, but can be taken if high energy, movement and contrast is required for a design. More complexity can sometimes be more engaging and more stimulating to behold. However, achieving this outcome will require planning and design. A lot of skill and a creative eye will be required to work with both image and typography carefully to place them together in such a way to establish a primary hook and prompt the eye through a composition. If done well, this can create very engaging and captivating results. In these examples, we see how elements have been used together well. The difficulty level for this technique is hard. So in conclusion, as a beginner, it can be easy to overlook direction in our design. Though remember, a clear direction will give overall flow to your composition, which can help a viewer navigate communication well. Careful consideration of scale, alignment, and proximity of visual elements can suggest flow and movement through a composition. So what can we learn? Well, without taking care to establish a clear visual hierarchy, a design will be confusing and difficult to comprehend. Establishing a clear starting point in a design and neglecting to suggest where to go next can lead to an uncomfortable user experience. It's easy to take direction for granted, but it can be crucial to add energy, movement and flow to help establish a clear sense of visual hierarchy. If harnessed in a strategic way and applied cleverly, contrast in direction can produce more compelling and attractive design. 
So in application, when you're designing posters or anything for that matter, be sure to consider contrast in direction to establish a clear visual hierarchy if appropriate. Also, when you look and observe other designs, ask yourself, how has hierarchy been considered? Is there a clear sense of hierarchy? How have they used contrast in direction in their design to achieve it? And how well does it work as part of the design? Well, I hope you enjoyed this design theory lesson. If you did, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of more design lesson videos like this in future. Now, this lesson is part of a bigger series on poster design and part of my poster design ebook. If you want to take a closer look at the examples I demonstrated in this video and learn more about poster design with tutorials on how to make poster design and undertake poster design challenges, you can invest in the poster design ebook. Link is in the description. Now, this video was created for all my members of the GDS Design School community. If you'd like to join the GDS Design School community where we chat about design, give each other feedback, and where I set design challenges, you are all welcome to join for free. Again, link is in the description, and I look forward to seeing you there. So until my next design lesson, unleash your creativity, and I'll see you next time.